Today, I will be giving you a guide on my newest build, my Mana Forge Cast on Crit Poison Sparker, and I'll first start out by giving you my thought process behind the build. So my original thought, more or less, came about by the new ascendancy changes for Pathfinder, and that is Nature's Reprisal seemed to be extremely OP. So what this node basically said to me is, if you could hit the target dozens of times a second, the target will take 135% more damage from Chaos Damage due to the 6 times 15 90% on Normal Wither, and then 50% more due to the Ascendancy. Alongside this over double damage node, I read Master Surgeon, like some other people, and it basically says to me, you can run Righteous Fire for free if you pick this node, which Righteous Fire gives roughly 40% more damage for casters. So with these two Ascendancy nodes, we need a Chaos spell skill. And in addition to that, since I wanted to use Vengeance, Cascade, or Nimus to enhance my ability to hit the target dozens of times per second for my Wither stacks. These are the three key things that I wanted in my build. So, since Mana Forge was such a success from my previous build, and I knew that I could trigger many, many skills and spells, this was the logical next process to getting up my Wither stacks. So, originally, I had four cast on crit Mana Forge setups, that being one in the bow, one in the chest, one in the gloves, and one in the helm. With this helm being on the market, I purchased extremely cheap a few weeks ago. But much like my previous build, even though I can cause a ton of screen cancer and hit the target hundreds of times, I determined that it wasn't the best for my setup. So I ended up dropping the helmet and gloves from the Mana Forge setups so that I could run more auras and have more debuffs on the boss so that my actual six link mana forge setups would do more damage in net than having four mana forge setups. Additionally, when creating this character, I found out about the life tap technology for mana forge in that you can link life tap to your mana forge setup in both your trigger, which in my bow's case is toxic rain, and the cast on crit spell, which is spark, and both of them will cost life, and thus the game recognizes the mana cost being zero, thus your main spender skill doesn't have to be a certain amount of mana, it just has to cost more than one, and my trigger skill being split arrow, which only costs six mana per cast, but every single time I cast it, I proc my triggers. So alongside this, since I need to hit the target dozens of times a second, best strategy for this is stacking a ton of cooldown reduction. Thus, I crafted a perfect bow in the Crucible to get as much crit as possible and as much CDR as possible, so that I can easily reach the 100% crit chance, so that my cast on crit procs every single time the cooldown's up, and I lowered the cooldown to under 0.1 seconds. So this is what my Crucible tree looks like. The first node is 10% crit chance. The second node is a whopping 6% crit chance, but my crits don't do any damage, which doesn't necessarily matter for this build at least, because since we're so passive starved, picking up crit multi and or linking crit multi isn't really a viable option, so in my head this is pretty much all upside. The next note I have is 25% CDR, the next note I have is 6% CDR per power charge, which with the minus 1 max we only have 3, but 18% CDR is still really good. And my last note is that I trigger tornado when I use split arrow or tornado shot. Thus, I trigger my mana forge setups with split arrow for this reason, and Additionally, since we don't really have a bunch of additional projectiles, I run Split Arrow because it has a base of 9, and I kind of need this since we're using Nimbus, and my projectiles go out in a circle in random directions. Thus, if I'm trying to hit a target, Split Arrow is the best way that I thought I could apply my curse, which is linked to Hex Touch and Despair. Now, going back to the bow, you can see that my bow has a whopping 15.51% base crit, which means I only need 700% crit chance to get 100% crit with this bow, which previous to this patch is roughly 50% more crit chance than you could ever get previously. Additionally, with the insane crit chance, it is a shaper bow that has the modifier level 20 cast on crit, which allows me to run another link to do way more damage. Alongside, I crafted spell damage with an essence, since all of our damage is through spells, attack speed so that I could hit the breakpoint of roughly 0.33 seconds to trigger my mana forges, and I multi-modded for more damage and crit chance. Thus, my final links are Empower, which gives us the most damage as a support, since bows don't have a lot of modifiers. Thus, 
plus two socketed supports is insane within power, alongside my Phantasmal Spark, which, since our ascendancy is based around Wither, we are required to have an all chaos damage skill, and the Phantasmal version gives us this. Link with Awaken Elemental Support, which is our second strongest damage support, along with our Mana Forged, Life Tap, and Phantasmal Toxic Rain. The reason for Phantasmal Toxic Rain is because it is one of the few bow abilities that has a ton of additional arrows, and the Phantasmal version allows for an additional 5 arrows. And the reason I keep it at level 1 is to reduce the mana cost, which is being life tapped, so thus it's saving me on some life. So now that we talked about the bow, I'll go to my next damage 6 link, which is in the Belly of the Beast. The reason I chose Belly of the Beast is because it's actually pretty insane, so you can get these pretty cheap, at least when I was building the build, with double implicits, which I have plus two duration and plus two proj, which is giving me plus four on my spark. It gives me an insane amount of life since the ranger starting area doesn't really have that much life. You can really only get to like 130, 140, maybe 150% if you allocate all the life. So this 38% increased life is pretty big. The additional all res is also being used as again, we're kind of starved for passives. And since we are a pathfinder and we are sustaining righteous fire with our life flask, the 50% increase Flask life recovery rate is extremely strong. Thus, this chest is pretty insane. And the links being Awaken Cast on Crit, Phantasmal Spark, Life Tap, Awaken Elemental Focus, Mana Forged, and Storm Rain. And the Anomalous Storm Rain is giving us increased beam frequency rate. Thus, we can hit the target dozens of times a second if they're standing on all the arrows. And adding to the Phantasmal Spark, since we are required to convert all the lightning damage to chaos, Thus, we obviously need 50% quality. Thus, a 30% quality Ashes of the Stars is required, which, since we have this, we take advantage of the reduced mana cost, and we run multiple auras, which is Petrified Blood, Determination, Herald of Agony, Precision, and Vitality. So going through these... I run Anomalous Precision for the Reservation Efficiency to fit in Precision, and additionally, we need the Accuracy so that our bow attacks actually hit the target so that it can proc a crit, and again, since we need so little crit chance because of our base 15% bow, this 60% crit chance is pretty huge. The next aura we run is Vitality, which I only keep at level 1, as I will get into later, as I take Volpack. Next, I run Determination, just so that we can actually take tank some physical hits, and this puts me at roughly 15k armor, which definitely isn't huge, but at least we're not paper. I run Divergent Herald of Agony for the insane 70% chance to poison, which again is being buffed by our ashes. And while we don't invest in poison pretty much at all, it's a huge quality of life for our mapping because, again, we are Pathfinder, and I chose to pick up Master Toxist so that our poison spread, thus giving us insane map clear, which this build is mainly focused on. The remaining poison chance only comes from two other nodes by Fatal Toxins, which is just 10% poison chance and 15% poison chance, resulting in 95% poison chance, which is good enough for me. And thus, this Herald of Agony gives us roughly 15 or so percent more damage, but due to the poison spreads, our effective DPS during mapping is way higher than that. And the last aura that we run is Petrified Blood, which again is being buffed by Ashes, thus making it extremely OP with the technology that many people have picked up on, and that is Petrified Blood in combination with the Blood Notch Jewel. And the Immutable Force Jewel makes us pretty much immune to hits, unless the hits one-shot us. And if you saw my 100% Delirium video, where it looks like I have 0 HP, this is the reason, and that is hits will not kill us unless we are hit by roughly 15,000 physical damage and or 45,000 plus elemental damage. Thus, since we are immune to hits and we take all this damage through degen, how do we recoup this thousands of damage per second by a single Watcher's Eye Jewel? Thus, I run a Watcher's Eye with my Vitality and Precision and the Flash Charge when I have Precision, even though we're a Pathfinder, to keep up my Life Flask. Since we are spamming my Life Flask every three or so seconds due to the chest mod for recovery rate and my belt mod for recovery rate. Thus, I need to generate roughly five charges per second on my flask mod. Thus, this Watcher's Eye gives me that. And in addition, the Vitality mod, 25 life per enemy hit, 
is pretty good since we are spawning at maximum roughly 240 sparks per second. Just this mod is giving us roughly 20,000 life per second if all these spiders hit the five maximum targets that I can hit. Now, obviously, we're not recovering 20,000 life per second in every scenario, but in super juiced content, like you saw in my 100% delirium video, it is possible. Now, alongside this life on hit, I negated the actual leech mechanic by taking Volpack, which I do to reduce the amount of damage that I take through the combination of a lethal pride and the keystone strength of blood. So this strength of blood keystone reduces the amount of damage that we take for both hits and non-hits. Thus, this node is like having one and a half times the power of a fortify, and even better because fortify doesn't reduce the amount of damage taken by damage over time effects. And I get this through the base amount of max leech. And again, this is doubled by the vault pack doubling. And I take the max leech nodes below vault pack for an additional 15% max and the leech mastery 25% increase to max. And the reason I do this is because, again, I don't really need to leech as my life gain on hit is way more than enough to sustain myself during heavy mapping scenarios. And I don't need leech because, again, my investment in my life flask through Pathfinder items and passives makes my life flask give me roughly 2,000 health per second. Thus, the damage reduction that we get from leech is way better than what actually leech would give me. So since we're on the tree, I will go through all my unique jewels, which are very important. So again, lethal pride is required to get the strength of blood keystone. And this specific number of lethal pride gives me a ton of double damage. Again, we talked about the blood notch, which allows us to be invulnerable to hits. We talked about immutable force, which makes our build playable since now every single time we get hit, we basically get stunned through the energy shield mastery. Stun threshold is based on energy shield. We pick up triple grand spectrum jewels because this is the best way to scale our crit chance based off of our 15% crit chance bow. So each one of these jewels is giving us 75% crit chance, which is pretty big and extremely valuable. In addition to this, we are picking up our corrupted blood immunity, maim immunity, and hinder immunity with these, which is extremely high quality of life. We already talked about our Watcher's Eye, which is our Vitality Precision Watcher's Eye. And the last unique jewel that we run is the new Ancestral Vision, which is giving us 50% chance to avoid ailments, which combined with the Thick Skin Avoid Ailments and the Essence Boot Mod is giving us 100% Avoid Ailments, along with the obvious 100% Suppression that we have. Also, since we run so many unique jewels, we need a lot of jewel sockets, which is why I run double cluster jewels, one being a chaos cluster jewel, which is giving us a decent amount of damage, since we don't have a lot of flat damage on the tree, giving us 30% chaos and 30% chaos. I run a three node voices, which we need for the jewel sockets, and also because we run Spark, and since Spark scales extremely well with projectile speed, I picked up three medium cluster jewels that give us this projectile speed, since if the Spark is moving extremely slowly, it will not be able to hit its maximum five targets in its duration. Thus, you can see projectile speed as projectile damage. So we pick up 30% projectile speed from each of our medium cluster jewels, which we have three. And in addition to this, next to our voices, we pick up additional projectiles, resulting in us being able to pierce the target five times, which is our maximum amount of times the spark can hit a target. We pick up the 15% more projectile speed to round it off. Thus, through all this technology, we have built a character that is basically immune to hits, and is able to recover thousands of life per second and basically hit everything on the screen for millions of damage a second. And while our single target isn't the greatest, if we're in an open arena, again, this character was created for a more mapping playstyle, and I believe I have successfully achieved this. So, if you have any comments and questions, put them in the comments, and I'll get to them. Thanks.